Good morning, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well today. Um, so I am super sleep deprived right now. <laughs> my my daughters kept me up incredibly late last night. Uh, one of them just didn't want to go to bed, and then the other one decided to keep waking up over and over and over again. <laughs> so today I'm gonna try to prep for this tattoo. Now I've got a pretty good idea of what I want to accomplish. It's part of a, part of a big piece that I've already started. So yeah, yeah, let's get straight to it. Uh, I've already sketched this out right here in my little sketchbook. So I wanted sort of a koi design, except simplified because uh, the story behind the tattoo isn't necessarily about a koi. But koi, koi make uh, for, for good tattoos and especially reference. Um, so this is a reference of a, a, a different koi tattoo. And then this right here is some black work design from an artist in New Zealand called uh, James Dean. So James Dean Tattooer, check him out. He's from Sunset Tattoo in New Zealand. And I really wanna to try to incorporate some of this black work into the fins of the fish that I'm doing today. So we're gonna play with that idea, see if it works out. If it doesn't, that's fine. That's what this is all about, is experimenting and seeing what we can come up with. So I'm just gonna get right to it. Uh, I wanna sort of copy this reference that I've already got. There's no reason to, or copy the sketch that I've already got. There's no reason to completely redo everything that I've already done. You can see it's already got the, the paper texture there too. So I'm just gonna drop that opacity down and we've already got our first layer. Uh, I sort of skipped the normal intro, so thanks for tuning in. We're gonna draw some fish. If you wanna check out all of my projects, you can visit joshj.blog forward slash links and everything's there. You can sign up for my newsletter, you can buy me a coffee if you're feeling really generous, you can uh, schedule consults for illustrations or tattoos, the whole shebang. All right, so I'm gonna get back to this. Thanks for tuning in again. And let's, let's just go ahead and switch to an ink. How's, yeah. Switch to, oh, you can see the little raccoon um, paw from, from an old uh, live stream there. So I really like the pattern of this koi here. Uh, so I'm gonna try to mimic like the black work in the nose, I'll go a little darker, because this is very fine line and I am not a fine line artist. Um, I wanna do a black work version of my fish designs with this koi pattern and some of this black work in the fins. So that's the goal, that's the goal. This was a tiny sketch here, so I am blowing it up quite a lot. Oh. This is going on one of my favoriteest clients ever. Um, she wanted to get a design that was uh, inspired by the White Snake Grim Fairy Tale. So if you haven't checked that out, it's it's really interesting. So uh, the king had a, a white snake in his his garden and this white snake gave the king the ability to speak with animals and his servant stole said white snake and uh, discovered that that's what it allowed the king to do now um, after the servant ate some of that white snake and I might be butchering pieces of this, so I apologize if I am. Uh, he also had the ability 
to speak with animals. And that led him on all sorts of wacky adventures. Uh, the first of which was an encounter with three fish, which he saved and threw back into a pond. Now, as payment, those three fish later brought him a golden ring. Uh, weird marriage proposal stuff <laughs> because princesses and all of that. But uh, when when they brought him the golden ring, uh, other animals along, I don't know. All right, so I am very tired. Let me reiterate that. Um, so the idea is I'm trying to get all of these animals that the, uh, the, the servant encountered. I'm trying to get all of those into a very large leg tattoo, starting with the fit. Well, I already did the, the snake. This is a fun experiment. Um, So now I'm trying to get the rest of the animals into the tattoo. All right, now I I don't want to go overboard with a scale pattern. But I do like the classic koi scale patterns. So I think what I'll do is start breaking this scale pattern up a little. And shrinking it down as it moves down the body. This will let me put the focal point on the head, go nice and dark, and still still have a nice scale pattern in the fish. Okay. So now we're we're getting to an area where I want to get some of this interesting black work flow. The first fin. That looks nice. Now it's a it's a marbling effect almost, so that's going to be really interesting for me to try to uh, fit into this fin. We'll see how it goes. What's up, Howard? If you're just tuning in and you're wondering, why does Josh sound like a zombie? It's because Josh's one-year-old and three-year-old were up way too much last night. <laughs> Actually, it looks really nice. It's on a smaller scale, so I'm not going to have quite as much of. Well, why not? Let's see. Where can I? Where can I get some darker darks? Yeah. 
Oh yeah, you had a baby. Yeah, yeah, it... I can't say it gets better, dude. <laughs> I mean, it's a very fulfilling, fulfilling thing. Um, the, the kiddos, don't get me wrong. I don't want to sound like, oh, parenting is horrible. But, uh, you know that fear that you felt as soon as you found out that your, your girl was pregnant? Um, that fear never, ever, ever goes away. Um, it's a... It's a stressful job, but it's worth it. And as far as my schedule the next couple of months, uh, just hit me up after the live stream and I'll I'll get you in. I'll get you in, sir. Oh. So this fin just ended up bigger than this one, uh, which I don't like. The cool thing about doing a design like this is, oh, wow, that's already fixed. I just added a little more marbling. Oh. Howard, are you still at the, uh, the, the game game shop? Is that what it was? Hell yeah, sir. That's something I would love to tackle for you. I don't know if you knew this about me or not, but I am a nerd. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I remember, I remember, did, did you, yeah, you came by and got some gift certificates from us for the, the Olympics thing, right? Oh, that looks nice. Not to toot my own horn here or anything. <laughs> For anyone wondering why I'm listening to like elevator-ish music, it's because this service is really awesome. It's called Stream Beats, and it's completely copyright-free music for things like YouTube or Facebook live streaming. All right, so. One of the things I like to do is zoom way out to look at the silhouette of something. So right now, this is actually starting to look a little too uh, cluttered for me. Like I really like the flow, but uh, it looks like these uh, side tail fins are really cluttering up the design. So rather than get rid of them, what I'm gonna do is just shrink them down. Let's see if that helps. And I stopped holding shift. Ah, fuck. So I lost my original selection, sorry. Alright, let's let's just 
shrink them down. See what that looks like. Now I have some keyboard shortcuts set up for all of this. So for me, I have L set to my lasso tool, control T for uh, the transform tool. All right, let's zoom out again. See how that's looking. That's better. That's not quite as cluttered. And you can see a little, uh, little tiny thumbnail up here in the overview window too. Oh. Wow, I am moving slow today. Yeah, I just realized how slow I am moving today. I apologize for that everybody. I'm not, I'm not gonna rush this design um, because I'm way too tired to try to rush this design. And I don't believe in rushing anything. got a little carried away with there we go that's nice how's that looking not too shabby all right I don't know what I just did all right <laughs> So what I'm trying to do now is just provide a little bit of uh, extra line, not line weight, sorry, extra weight to this fin by doing a few thicker, darker sections of the marbling just to give it a little more form and to bring it forward a bit. That also helps clean up the silhouette up here, you can see. All right. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, sir. Um, thank you for, for the compliment, I will say. Not talent, not talent. Um, I, I am able to draw some of this because I draw nonstop. Now, if you come in, I can help you turn those South Park tattoos into like really cool South Park tattoos, though. Actually, that'd be really interesting and tricky to try to tattoo. Just the, the nice smooth circles for the heads. Like, simple designs are actually harder to pull off. Because <laughs> every little wobble is like, whoop, <laughs> I see that. Mm. So I like when the marbling connects from one side to another, um, but sometimes it's a puzzle. It's like, how, how can you make that look decent without something getting way too cluttered? Which is why it's okay to experiment. 
Well, I mean, it's, it's necessary to experiment. It's not just okay. You got to do it. some promise. So I've been talking to people in New Zealand lately. That's fun. Uh, last night I had a conversation with uh, an Islamic woman who moved to New Zealand. That would be fun. That would be fun. Um, I would have to do uh, a Magikarp somewhere, since Magikarp was the most overpowered Pokemon ever in the original blue and red carts. <laughs> Yeah, the New Zealand trip is looking awesome, which is why I started looking at tattoo studios in New Zealand too, uh, where I found James Dean, the tattooer. Um, his work is really cool. But New Zealand is, is freaking cool, from all I can tell. figured it'd be nice if I had uh, some some contacts in New Zealand if we ever decided to vacation there that way I could couch surf instead of uh, renting a hotel it's like oh yeah yeah let's, let's just go visit my friends yeah so New Zealand is weird uh, because when you think about it you think it's the other side of the world but really if you look at the globe instead of a map the the Pacific is just the Pacific. <laughs> so New Zealand is actually really close to Japan and Australia and Hawaii. So they have a weird oriental mix of like Islander tattooing and Japanese style tattooing and Western style tattooing just all meshed together into one. And it's really freaking cool. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but the culture in New Zealand is really interesting too, so it seems like something that I would flow right into really well. Uh, so I, I tend to come into the studio really early, I tattoo while the kids are in school, but everything in New Zealand is so laid back, like even t the tattoo studios, their, their open hours are typically like 10 to 6, <laughs> so they're not open all night, they don't believe in, uh, they don't believe in, uh, living to work they work to live it's it's a really interesting shift in thinking i like this fin better already Yeah, I'm with you on that one, dude. Uh, it's not really, not really a possibility here unless you build some sort of uh, side income hustle online. But um, taxes, taxes in the U.S. are not what people think they are. Um, by the time you account for uh, education and medical, we actually <laughs> like. 
if we're not paying it in taxes, we're actually paying it more out of our paychecks. Um, if you think of it that way, Americans have less of a disposable income than most places in the world because of our not high taxes. It's freaking crazy. Okay, since I like this fin that I did so much more than this one, I'm just going to start that one over. Which is a really convenient thing for me to be able to do digitally. Just so I can get a fresh perspective on this fan. I'm gonna flip it around too. Yeah. So this is another keyboard shortcut I have set up for myself. It's just the H key and it will rotate the canvas. Well not rotate it, it'll flip it out horizontally. Just so that you can get a different view of whatever you're working on, which is super important. Um, especially when it comes to portraits. Um, so it's really hard to spot mistakes in your drawings if you've been staring at the same drawing for however long. So flipping your canvas lets you see a different drawing. <laughs> as odd as that sounds, it's a different drawing when you flip it around. I need to get a drink. I'll be right back. Alrighty, I have returned. Oddly, looking at uh, looking at the tattoo on the recording screen over there, so I've got two screens set up, the one that I'm drawing on and the one I'm um, streaming from. But looking at the, uh, the recording or streaming screen, let me see some stuff that I, I wasn't paying attention to before either. So that helped me find some shapes that, uh, actually, it helped me find shapes that I didn't like. <laughs> so now I'm trying to make them shapes that I do like. But that just goes to show whenever you, uh, whenever you can change your perspective a little bit, whether that's in life or in art, anytime you can change your perspective a little bit, uh, you can 
you can usually make things better than they were. Like that. That that fin that fin makes me happy now. So now I just got to do that two more times. Uh, so it's three fish. <laughs> it's three fish that the servant helped and then uh, three fish that come back to help him later with a golden ring. So the, the spots on their foreheads are all going to be gold to sort of signify that golden ring. Um, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and start working on the next one. If you're, if you're enjoying the show, I will, I will continue the show. And again, I apologize for being so, so very tired. Fatherhood is both the most rewarding and exhausting thing that I think I could ever do with my life. <laughs> numero uno I'm gonna fix that any harder on myself than I have to. Looks like we might be getting tornado warnings in Moorhead today. Um, this is hearsay, <laughs> so I'm not 100% sure on that. I know it's also supposed to rain a good bit.
get some snow tomorrow too. Well, tonight and tomorrow. Oh. My brain. <laughs> Kids isn't nearly as bad as two, they said. So something I mentioned on the last live stream whenever I was doing fur um, or fur indications is uh, like the three hatch texture. <laughs> so you can you can show a pretty consistent direction just by repeating three hatches. If you're going for a fur texture. Now, you, you space it out based on where you want the emphasis to be, so it wouldn't be like a uniform three hatch over and over and over and over again. Um, the same applies to scales or hair or facial hair or any real texture. When in doubt and you know you don't want to do too much detail, go for groups of three, so three scales. Uh, that that indicates the direction that implies that there are more <laughs> but that's that's one of the most brilliant tiny tips I have ever picked up with drawing is you know, when in doubt do three um, or groups of three and you can you can really imply what you need to imply without overdoing it that way
So, all right. I, uh, I would like to apologize for the low energy today. So I am, I'm gonna have to go ahead and call this a day just so I can get up, stretch, and try to get some more energy going through my, my, my veins here. Um, but I'm really, really happy with where this is headed and uh, I get to I get to tattoo it tomorrow. <laughs> All right, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and wake up a bit, chug some coffee, and uh, wish me luck on this. Thanks for tuning in. If you would like to help support me, my family, my business, make sure you visit joshj.blog forward slash links. Sign up for my newsletter, and uh, you can buy me a coffee or follow me on other social media channels from there. I'm very active on Mastodon nowadays. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I think that about covers it. And I will I'll be back next Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take it easy everybody uh, get some rest if you can hopefully I can too uh, oh and we also have the flash event this Sunday so we're raising money for Tri-County Animal Shelter come out, get an animal tattoo support the local animal shelter and let's save some lives everybody so uh, until Sunday or next Tuesday whenever I see you next, thanks for tuning in and uh, yeah, bye